A very good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and thank you so much for joining the live uh, signatures or radio, whatever place it is that you're tuned on to this uh, particular show, which is daily, every single day. There is a purpose, or there is a productivity, or there is a, an episode about resilience, purpose, productivity, and resilience. Those are the three things that we talk about on this uh, paid podcast, on this show. And uh, being a daily show, there's a way we normally do our stuff. Sometimes we go on a tangent and we do a series of messages. And right now we are in the middle of a heavy series. We're talking about the road less traveled and how to give birth to yourself or how we, why we must give birth to ourselves. And one of the three ways is to dare. The other two are to do something unconventional or to do something uncomfortable. We're talking about daring and uh, what the advantages are when we go on a dare. And today, let's just continue going deeper. Tomorrow might bring this small part into a close. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to talk about different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Quite a bit we've learned uh, in the past uh, several episodes, even as far as daring is uh, concerned. And we've said that one of the things that daring does is that it helps you to conquer self-doubt. Please go back five episodes or so and uh, listen to that. It helps you to conquer self-doubt. Secondly, it introduces you to your hidden self. This is seriously powerful. Go back and uh, listen to that. And then three, it stretches your limits. It helps you to stretch your limits. And that's where growth is, and I'm going to talk about growth tomorrow. And four, it helps to conquer fear. This is a very, very powerful thing to do. Conquering fear. We all need that fear to be conquered. In one way or another, going on a dare helps you to just do that. Today, let's talk about one more thing that uh, daring helps you. Number five, it helps us to conquer new frontiers. There are some people who are born in one district went to school in the same district fell in love with a girl in the same district got married to that particular girl raised kids in that particular district never moved out of that district as in all they know is the world is their district there is a little growth in there there is a little exposure in there one of the biggest learning experiences we can go through is exposure to new territories, new frontiers. And this is what daring does. When we stay where we were raised, I'm just using that as an analogy. When we stay where we are all the days of our lives, there is little chance to explore. Not just to explore the world, but also to explore ourselves. And find out what we are really made up of. How we can be able to adjust to new surroundings and new environments. It can happen when you stay in the same location. I mean, cross the border. Some of you, you've never been on a train. And the train is in your country. Okay, I know when I say you've never been on a plane and so on. Some people might be thinking about expenses and so on. And that, that's that's okay. But... <laughs> Some of you, you've been in a plane, but you've never been a pillion passenger. You know what a pillion passenger is? A guy who is given a ride on a motorbike. Okay? As in, we need to experience some new things. Do some new things. 
eat some new things. I don't want to go there because there's some weird things that you can really eat. But I don't want to go there. But if we are going to be daring, it's going to help us to conquer new frontiers. And conquering new frontiers is what helps us to grow, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. And I always wanted to be an author. All my life, I, I can remember it as if it was yesterday. I always wanted to be an author. I could see one of the pastors who um, the church I was attending, he was an author, he was writing books and so on and so forth. So one day I approached him and I asked him, how, how do you do this thing? And to me, it was a big deal to have a book with your name on it. Ouch! I mean, it was a big deal for me. I just couldn't reconcile. I, I, it was it was beyond my mind to grasp that that can actually happen. I wanted to be an author. But for the life of me, I thought this is absolutely impossible. It's it's a mountain. It's uns, insurmountable. It's something I cannot be able to do. I don't even... I didn't even think about how... I mean, it, remotely connecting it to a possibility... It wasn't occurring. It wasn't happening to me at that moment in time. Then, after about 10 years of back and forth and so on, maybe 15, 15 years, I dared. I dared to write my first book. What did I do? I just started. And I can tell you that before I was through with that book, turning your setbacks into major comebacks before I was ever through with it. I already have synopsis for the next book. Not only did I see the possibility of others, but I already knew the titles as well as the content of the other books that I can be able to write. These possibilities were now new frontiers for me. And they became new frontiers for me because I conquered the first one. And I went on a dare. When you don't go on a dare, you don't know what... Let me just explain this for a minute. For some reason, when you stay doing the same old, same old, I know we get the same old results. But you know what you're robbing yourself of? You're robbing yourself of some possibilities, some boundless possibilities that do exist. Life is structured in such a way that those ones who are doing are the ones who get ideas. Ideas flood their way. And those ones who are not doing nothing, of course you're going, you're going to get ideas, but you don't have momentum to implement any idea that comes your way. It is in the middle of action, the middle of experiencing something that ideas come. That you become creative, that you, you, you get new dimensions, your mind expands. So these new frontiers come to you. The shores, distant shores, endless shores or endless peaks. They come to you because you dared. If you don't dare, the frontiers are closed. You cannot see the new frontier. It's closed to you. The dare is the one that starts introducing you to this. And it always happens. It doesn't matter what it is that you're engaged in. It's a law. It's a kind of like a law. I don't know what law I can give it, what name I can call it. I'm, I'm writing a law, a book, a book called uh, The Twelve Substantive Laws of Purpose. And this is a law. This law is that every moment you step out, you grow. Every moment you step out, your mind expands. Every moment you step out, your reach expands. Every moment you step out, actually your possibilities start expanding and becoming real. So I I, I wrote that book. Not only did I see the possibility of others, I, I knew the titles of others and their content. And through that process to date, to date, I can tell you that writing a book is not a big deal for me. So much so that I have helped countless others to write theirs something that was an impossibility seemingly for me and through that process of a dare i've gone through this self-bathing process not only created myself as an author but i've 
uh, created myself as a ghostwriter, as a consultant in this uh, books industry, probably even as a publisher, all these things because I dared. There was a possibility in my life and I dared to follow it. You see, let me tell you something that you need to understand. The fruit of your dare is seldom the immediate conquest that you're going to get. The biggest fruit of your dare is the ripple effects that you're going to get out of that dare. Some people have benefits reverberating for years on end that are directly or even indirectly connected to the initial dare that they were on. And that's what we rob of ourselves. We rob ourselves of this ripple effect of a dare. Because our minds are so structured in such a way to think that the only thing I can get is a failure or success at this moment in time. We're just counting it today or this action. The action has reverberations throughout life. Some actions can have reverberations throughout destinies and even throughout generations. Because you dared. If you don't dare, this is what you're robbing yourself of. Empires are not created by a direct, uh, you know, a direct action like this. They are created by reverberations of dares. So something you do today has to give birth to something else, which gives birth to something else, which gives birth to something else. Before you know it, you are seated in the White House as the president of the free country. Because of a dare some years back, probably the White House wasn't even in your sight. I don't know, I'm, I'm using that as an example. But that's the point I'm making. We rob ourselves of these new frontiers when we don't dare. But when we go on a dare, we invite ourselves to new possibilities in our lives that have an impact, far reaching effect. Not just on ourselves, but on many other people around us. Probably our kids, our generations to come. Some of us are suffering because our parents did not dare. <laughs> right? It's true. It, it is absolutely true. Our grandparents did not dare. They, what did they do? They maintained status quo, school. And we are paying the fruits of the same. We are paying the price of the same. And when we go on a dare, we break that start at school and we start impacting and affecting the lives of other people who are going to come after us. We are the first beneficiaries, probably. But remember this, even as I come to a close, I can never overemphasize this. Don't look at the immediate results of going on a dare. That should not be the only motivator. Your motivator should be the fact that you don't see boundless possibilities. But going on a dare puts aspects on your eyes and opens these possibilities to your vicinity. And now you can be able to see these endless shores and these new frontiers that you need to conquer. They don't come to you. They are hidden. They are always going to be hidden in the starter school. But a dare shines a light on them, exposes them to you, makes them your target. So let us learn to dare once more. Tomorrow, we'll bring this mini series to a close. Until then, bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.